You're probably very familiar with two or three parts of the ear, but didn't realize there was a structure that looked like a deep sea creature involved in hearing. On the outside, what you usually think of as the ear is actually called the pinna. Go in through the auditory canal and you'll reach the tympanum or eardrum. The vibrations of sound will vibrate the tympanum, which will vibrate the three bones of the middle ear. The malleus or hammer, the incus or anvil, and the stapes, or stirrup. The stirrup will vibrate against the oval window of the inner ear, which has pressure balanced by the round window. These movements will move fluids in the cochlea and cause hair cells to bend and send signals to the auditory nerve. And finally, although it isn't part of hearing, it is a key component of balance, that's the semicircular canals. Sound first enters the outer ear, then the middle ear, and then the inner ear, before being sent to the auditory nerve. Let's look at what happens in more detail. Sounds are actually vibrations in the atmosphere. When they move through the auditory canal and to the eardrum, the vibrations are transferred from the eardrum to the malleus, to the incus, and then to the stapes of the middle ear. When the stapes vibrates the oval window, Sound is amplified by about 20 times because the oval window is so much smaller than the eardrum. As the oval window moves in, the pressure must be relieved, so the round window will move out, and vice versa. The movement of the two windows pushes fluid and transfers the vibrations to the delicate membranes in the cochlea. These vibrations will resonate with particular hair cells that match the frequencies. Some hair cells respond only to high frequencies and others to low frequencies. When the hairs bend, an action potential is triggered and neurotransmitters are sent to a sensory neuron, which transfers the impulse to the auditory nerve. If the hair cells of the cochlea do not function correctly, a cochlear implant may be used to correct some of the hearing loss. The implant has external and internal features. Externally, there is a microphone to pick up sounds, which are sent to a transmitter that sends processed sounds to the internal receiver and stimulator. This will convert sounds to electrical impulses in the electrode ray that is in the cochlea. The electrical stimulations will signal the auditory nerve without using the hair cells. Although audio processing isn't perfect, it's a high enough quality for people with the implants to make out speech at least 80% of the time. While the semicircular canals are part of the inner ear, they don't contribute to hearing. That doesn't mean that they don't have an important job. The canals are also filled with fluid and hair cells, but instead of detecting sound, they detect motion. When your head tilts, the gel-like liquid inside the semicircular canals moves with your head, but because of inertia, it lags behind a bit. The movement of the liquid bends hair cells, which send signals to your brain. Because the canals are at right angles to each other, your brain can interpret where you are in 3D space, giving you a sense of balance and positioning. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.